guys and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Today we are going to be captaining one of the most incredible, most fascinating airplanes ever to grace this earth. This is the Concorde. A lot of you guys might not even be old enough to remember this thing. This was a supersonic passenger plane. That's right. It's it, crazy to even say that. I think it first flew back in the 1960s, first started service in 1976, went all the way through 2003, has not flown since, but uh, it's the fastest passenger jet ever, and it's truly, truly incredible. It's going to be fun to, to ride around in. We've got to pay 40 bucks for it. Holy cow. You know, a lot of these mods, some are made by the actual devs, but others are made by people in the community. So, I mean, it's a lot, but it's, it's going to be worth it. I'm happy to support. The, apparently, this is like true one-to-one. -one, like all the switches actually work. Like we we are actually piloting the Concorde here, as the pilots would back in the day. And this this thing is is truly just insane. So we're gonna get this thing up in the air. We're gonna be flying from Paris to New York City, JFK. Some of you guys might know why we're doing that route, but um, we're gonna talk about it. We've got a lot of facts, a lot of interesting tidbits. It's gonna be fun. Like I said, we are gonna be taking off from Paris. We are gonna be going from Charles de Gaulle and we want uh I think runway 26 right it's a bunch of gates runways are going to be here 26 right it's already got us taken off from there that's that's really really sad and we're going to be going to JFK just wherever we end up I'm going to make a daytime for us just so we can see everything and uh here we go let's let's fly this bad boy dude look at this behemoth oh my oh there goes our nose hold on hold on go outside go outside go outside hurry up this was one of the most uh, the most iconic parts about this plane. Our nose here, you can see this thing's kind of retracting. If we go back inside, we can, uh, I believe if we set our flaps down to, to five degrees, if we zoom in, that's on five. Yeah, I believe the nose should ideally start to droop. There it goes. The droop nose, the droop snoot is what some people would call it. Very interesting looking plane, dude. Long, super skinny. I believe only two by two seating. That nose as well as the wing shape were kind of the defining features of it. You've just got this giant delta triangle looking thing. Just kind of a long, skinny fuselage here. Four giant jet engines on the back of this thing. This was a supersonic airliner. This thing went faster than the speed of sound twice it flew just over Mach 2 at cruising altitude just absolutely ridiculous man a pretty spacious cockpit so I believe there were three pilots obviously the two sitting up front up here as well as this guy here I think he was like an engineer or something like that forget what his his title was I think this is just a jump seat dude look at all these switches and fuses and stuff so this thing first flew in 1969 it first flew as like a service aircraft for the public in 1973, I believe. Don't quote me on that, something like that. But uh, it truly was incredible. Oh my goodness, look at this, dude. The whole thing. So like we had to pay 40 bucks for this, but this whole thing is all built out. We've even got the champagne ready to go and these people are gonna want it, dude. Every single seat here costs about $12,000 round trip. Ooh, look, they already got the champagne out. If it was 1990, every seat would cost 12,000 round trip. And in today's dollars, that's about $27,000. So back in the, ooh, well, that's not done. Okay, we're, we're just gonna turn around and, and walk these halls. Back in the day, there's like, you know, there's coach and then there's premium and then there's business class and first class. And then there was Concord class. If you were flying Air France or British Airways, these were the two, um, you know, uh, airliners that were running these things, then uh, that was kind of the peak of their service levels. Now, before we take off, we're going to talk stats on this bad boy, all right? Like I said, it is a supersonic passenger plane, which is ridiculous. It went just over Mach 2, which is about 1,350 miles per hour. That is 800 miles an hour faster than a 747. It also flew around five miles higher. Now, like I said, there were two airliners running this thing, Air France and British Airways, and it primarily went between four cities, Paris, London, and then it would go to or return from New York City and Washington DC Dulles Airport. Now, obviously transatlantic is a big route. That's really, really important. A lot of big businessmen and people like that have to fly that. The other reason why it did that 
is because it had to have its supersonic booms over the ocean. I guess there's rules and regulations probably for good reason that it shouldn't be happening over land and over people. So it had to do these transoceanic flights to be able to hit its supersonic speeds. Speaking of those supersonic speeds, they would cut your travel time in half. So for example, New York City to London normally would take you about four hours and 56 minutes today. If you were flying on the Concorde like back in the 90s, that would only take you about two hours and 50 minutes, which is insane. You were literally buying back your time. That's part of the reason why they could charge so much for it. For business people, it was a lifesaver. For, you know, fans and, and aviation nerds and things, it was just something really, really cool. I mean, it's, it's something I'm sad I never got to experience. It also came with its problems. Okay, back in the aircraft here. Let's get this thing ready to go. So I, I watched a tutorial. I mean, th this is like the real thing. I'm, I'm taking you guys to Mach 2 today in this a as a normal pilot would. So I hope you're ready. I don't know if I trust myself. We are... Oop, oop, nope. Okay, off to a bad start. We already lowered our nose cone there. We want to keep that at five, uh, five degrees. We're going to want to bring our altitude select up to 28,000 feet. That's going to be our, our first... Uh, cruising altitude. These right here are our afterburner switches. One, two, three, and four. Yes, jet engines, supersonic speed with Pilot T. Martin. Hope you guys are ready for this. After that, you just kind of send it. So here we go, full throttle. Let's get it. Gotta love those afterburners on a civilian passenger aircraft taking off from runway 26 right now. A lot of you guys probably know, some of you might not know, this is also the runway the Concorde took off from when it crashed. Over 100 lives were lost. We'll talk about it once we're up in the air. It was one of the most devastating events in aviation history, and it's really, really crazy how it happens. So I thought it would be kind of nice to not reenact that, but just, you know, make an ode to it. If you don't remember your past mistakes, you're bound to repeat them. So we can talk about it. We can honor it. And uh, we can we can reflect on it. So here we go. All right, are we good to uh, are we good to take off? Oh shoot! I think we're I think we're beyond good. Wow! Look at this thing go. I think we might be a little bit heavy on our uh, on our altitude or our, our pitch here, but we're gonna be fine. All right. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna raise the uh, the landing gear. Landing gear coming up there, beautiful. I don't know why, but sometimes when I hit my landing gear, it turns off our throttle. So we've got that. At 250 knots, ooh, our nose is already coming up automatically, that's good. Uh, are we at 250? We're above 250. We're gonna turn off our afterburners. Let's save some fuel here. We are going to bring our nose up. Our nose is already in the up position. We are gonna hit uh, flight director one, autopilot one and the INS switch to switch to LNAV mode. We're also gonna come over here, we're gonna say max climb, and uh, forget which one. Um, I saw a handbook back here somewhere. Do you think I could, oh, the workshop manual? Let me read this real quick. Altitude acquire is what we need. Oh, oh, nope, keep the nose up, keep the nose up. Okay, beautiful. All right, so now we should be climbing to our initial cruising altitude of 20, 8,000 feet, which is already pretty insane. Look at this. Look at Paris in the background, eh? What beautiful country. Dude, this is insane. Look at these giant... These engines were made by Rolls-Royce, by the way. Kind of crazy, right? Look at these giant things. This, I mean... It's kind of ugly when the droop nose is down and stuff, but it's also one of the most beautiful airplanes I have ever seen in my entire life. Just look at how cool this thing looks, dude. I mean, it is it is a very interesting shape, without a doubt. But it's pretty cool. Just rocketing up into the sky like nothing we have ever seen before. This this is amazing. All right, so we're gonna go back inside here. Notice how our, our nose cone, which was down to help us for visibility during taxi and stuff, is now up. So now we're gonna have a lot better aerodynamics, and that's gonna help us get up to our uh, our speeds that we want. We are currently at about, uh, I don't know, 395, something like that. 390, 390 it looks like. Hopefully we're gonna be able to keep going up. There's our Mach, we're at about Mach 0.75 and we're trying to get up to 28,000 feet. So we're just gonna, we're gonna chill out here for a second. I guess we could kind of start talking about this crash, all right? So 
Very, very sad. Uh, happened back in 2000. July 25th, 2000, literally the exact same scenario that we just had. Nice, clear day, nothing wrong in the skies. Aircraft seemed all right, taking off from runway 26 right, same place, going to JFK. Full group of people on board, 100 passengers, three pilots and six flight attendants, 109 people total on board. There was a flight that took off about five minutes before the Concorde did, and that, that airplane dropped a small metal, like long skinny piece of metal, like a little piece of shrapnel, a little piece of debris, and that was sitting on the runway. And obviously you're not gonna be able to see that. Now, I think since then a lot of airports will do like runway sweeps and stuff after takeoffs or multiple times per day to try to scout this stuff out and try to see it before the you know bad things happen but uh, unfortunately for this concord flight they did not see that and uh, it ran over this shrapnel the tires exploded and the shrapnel from the tires like the little pieces of rubber blasted up into the wing now you guys can see these are the wings here i think it hit like somewhere in here obviously these are major fuel tanks and it didn't exactly like rupture right through it but the force of it kind of caused the liquid on the inside or the fuel on the inside to move around and it ruptured. And we'll talk about why in a second because there was kind of a bit of a mistake. But basically it ruptured the fuel tank, fuel started coming out, caught on fire. The engine started failing and about two minutes into the flight, they lost their thrust. They, they didn't have enough speed to be able to stay up. They, um, they ended up crashing into a hotel in Paris and four people in that hotel perished as well. So in total, 113 people passed away. And like I said, I mean, it was it was one of the most catastrophic events in aviation history. Let me check on our uh, our situation here. We're at about Mach one. We might be popping through the uh, the sound barrier here. We're also getting close to 28,000 feet. So as soon as we get there, we should level out, and then we're gonna have some more piloting to do. I gotta admit, dude, this. For a supersonic plane, I feel like our visibility is insane. Look at this. I feel like pilots never have nice windows. We've got like a Millennium Falcon looking thing here. We've got a giant window to the left. We've got a giant one left of that. We've got two giant ones over on her side. This is epic. We've got a lot of room to move around and stretch your legs and things. This is nice. All right, so we are approaching 28,000 feet. I hope we stay there. We're above Mach. I didn't hear any sort of a sound barrier break or anything. You won't hear it on the inside. 28,000. There she is right there. Okay, so now let me consult my, my handbook back over here. We could also just take a, a moment to appreciate this. Just cruising at 28,000 feet. Oh, oh. In front of it, it's silent because we're ahead of the speed of sound. There's the sound barrier break. Okay, that's what I was hoping for. Wow. Oh, no, no, no. What? What? Okay, uh, we, we, something's going wrong and I'm not sure what. Okay, we need auto throttle on. We want mock hold on. We want to set this bad boy to 60,000 feet. Come on, I, I don't, I don't know what, what thing is going off. 60,000 feet's our maximum altitude. Are we losing altitude or anything? I think we're good. Do I need to freak out? I don't think we need to freak out. Okay. It's over. That scared me. Max climb, altitude acquire, AT1 off. Afterburners are going to have to go on. One, two, three, four. I love clicking all these buttons, dude. Oh, there we go. All right, we are, we are back after it. So he's going up again. Our Mach number should be going up. We want to end up around here. Oh my goodness, dude. It's so quiet outside. Look at like... Just think of the engineering required for something like this. To be traveling at this speed. That is just insanity, dude. I'm kind of lost for words here. This is so cool. All right, back inside. I hope our mock starts climbing. We're climbing altitude. As we get higher in altitude, I'm sure our mock's gonna keep going up. Keep on climbing, little buddy. Don't let me down. So anyway, yeah, it, I mean, it was, it was absolutely terrible and for the most part, they did investigations and things, and for the most part, they found that the pilots acted as they should have. 
there weren't any gross negligent things or anything like that, but there were a couple of problems that happened. So number one is just that the Concorde's tires were prone to explosions. It happened a lot when they were taking off, when they were landing. I mean, it had multiple tires. This happens to airplanes quite a bit, you know, hopefully less now, but it, it does happen. It's a part of it. It's just for whatever reason, because of the speeds and the temperatures and things like that, that the Concorde was, was moving at, especially when it was taking off and landing the tires just weren't, weren't really good enough. And it, it's probably something that should have been looked into long before this event happened. Obviously the debris on the ground, that was another thing that probably should have been looked into. It wasn't really protocol at that time. It's more common for them to do airport sweeps and runway sweeps and things like that. Now it's also just kind of a freak accident. Like there's no way you can predict that. Like this, this piece literally fell off the airplane as it was taking off like five minutes beforehand like that's some final destination type stuff they even tracked that airport back they looked at it ma at its maintenance logs and it, it happened in like israel or something like that i i don't know it, it total freak accident this random piece of metal traveled all around the world and ended up right there in that spot for the concord to run over just insane Ooh, getting up to Mach 1.5. We're at about 37,000 feet. All right, here we go. We we are getting after it. Let me get outside. We can maybe watch it from here. I kind of want at least a little bit of sound, though. Maybe just turn it down. Before we get back into this, let me see. Uh, where are we? Ooh, look at this, dude. This is so sick. So obviously, this is the English Channel right here. London's going to be over here. This is all going to be going to be France. So France is off to our left over here. This, you can't even see it. The UK's over that way somewhere. London's over there. Okay. Anyway, yeah. So we, what do we have here? We've got, um, let me, I like having the engine noise at least. Get out in front of it. See some some land over here and have the, the engine noise. So we've got, um, you know, tires that probably should have been looked into. We've got a freak piece of debris that's traveled around the world and just happened to get run over. Obvious, ter terrible timing. That's, that's it, right? That's what happened. Unfortunately, there is one other thing, and uh, I, I don't think the, the, you know, investigation they did found that anybody was specifically at fault, but there was a mistake that was made. The plane was overloaded by about 1,800 pounds, and I watched a really good YouTube video about this. I think it's his, his channel's called Mentor Pilot. If you look up, like, what happened to the, the Concorde, you'll find it. Basically, the math was done wrong, and they had too much fuel on board. They thought they were going to burn more fuel during their taxi than they actually did. So the fuel tanks were overloaded. The jet was a little bit too heavy, which, you know, obviously it didn't have enough speed. It couldn't, you know, take off properly. So if it was lighter, it could have potentially maybe been able to save it, although they don't think that could have happened. But really the biggest thing is they think that the fuel tanks were so filled when that rubber came up into the plane, the, the, the wing is literally like the, the edge of the, the fuel tank. So when it pushed that up, it didn't puncture it, but it pushed it up. The fuel in the fuel tank had nowhere else to go. And obviously it's got to go somewhere. So the fuel is what literally punctured out. So maybe if the tanks were a little less full, it would have just dented the bottom of the wing instead of puncturing it, which means it wouldn't have caught on fire, which means they wouldn't have lost engines and they ultimately wouldn't have crashed. Now this is all... You know, it, there's no way you can actually know. Hindsight's, I was going to say 2020. It's not 2020 in this case. But they're thinking that potentially could have saved it. But again, it's all just hypotheticals. Dude, this thing is this thing is just so cool. Now, we're supposed to be turning off. Are we at Mach 2 yet? Almost. We're going to turn off our, uh, our what's it called at Mach 2, our afterburners. So let's, let's just chill right here. This is a cool view. So, yeah, this all happened in 2000. Like I said, it started flying in 69. It started service in 76. It ran for quite a while. It was fairly successful. I think from like a money standpoint, it maybe was tr struggling to break even. I'm honestly not sure. I, I, I know it was very popular, but I don't think they were making a ton of money on it. Um, this happened in 2000. They paused the Concorde program for a little bit. They took time to investigate it, to improve it. They brought back uh, Kevlar reinforced fuel tanks and wings. They brought back uh, uh, tires that wouldn't explode. They improved the electrical system to help with like, you know, if fire started to be able to put them out, to be able to realize it sooner, yada, yada, yada. They fixed all these things and then it went back into service. And this, this is literally crazy. Like if we're talking final destination, just like crazy coincidences. The first flight of the Concorde after it crashed was on September 11th, 2001. Seriously. I, 
I, I don't even know what to say. I, I don't. That's. Talk about the worst timing possible. Talk about the craziest coincidence possible. Put your tinfoil hats on. I don't know, man. So that's that's crazy. Obviously, it didn't go well from, from then. You know, the next few years of flying were not good. The Concorde was incredibly expensive to run. A lot of people stopped flying because of that. And eventually, the program was scrapped in 2003. So uh, the crash was... Oh, oh, we're gaining a lot of altitude really quickly. We good? Did we just go through Mach 2? Is that, I think that's what happens when you go to Mach 2. Holy cow, dude. We're up to 48,000 feet. We're still going to keep climbing. I'm going to keep our afterburners on. Actually, we... Hold on. Are we... Are we going to go over the UK? We're going to go over part of the UK. That's cool. This is a nice angle right here. So, yeah. It was the beginning of the end. Ended in 2003. Uh, I think in total, 20 of these things were made. And uh, there's still 18 around. They're in air museums all over the place. Obviously, one of them blew up into a million different pieces. Uh, there was another one that was deconstructed for some reason, but uh, it was a fairly successful program. It just had one really, 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 really big fault and uh, some bad timing after that. And that was the end of the Concorde. I, I, I feel like at some point they're going to have to bring something like this back. I feel like if you could make this safe, which... I mean, I guess really its track record says it's not very, but if you could make something like this safe, this would be massive. And I think in today's day and age, you could probably do it a lot cheaper. You know, I, I don't think the plane tickets would cost as much as, you know, $27,000 a pop, but I, I think it would be a massive success. And I, I think, you know, eventually that's probably where we're going to go. We're going to be able to get around the world uh, much, much faster than we can currently, or maybe it'll never happen. Who knows? But uh, it's freaking sick. I would have loved to experience it. Hello, mates. How y'all doing down there? Hello, governor. Tea and crumpets. We're flying over the uh, the southwestern part of the UK, I think. I'm gonna get Google Maps out. Uh, we're flying over Plymouth and Southampton, mate. No, Southampton's too far, too far to the east. E e Exeter, Exeter, Plymouth, uh, South Devon, AONB, Cornwall, e Exmoor National Park, Barn, Barnstaple. I've never been to the UK. I would love to go. I leave you in here to tell a story for one second, and you've got you've got the alarms going off. What's up, man? I I honestly don't know. We're above. Uh, are we above Mach two? We're right at Mach two, and we're getting up to sixty thousand feet. So we're approaching the, uh, the the peak altitude. Ooh, look at this. So we're gonna get into some fun facts now. Let's end this on uh, on a good note. So this thing, like I said, it, it flew five miles above where 747s do currently. 60,000 feet, you could be up there in your 12,000, aka $27,000 round trip airplane seat, drinking your champagne, looking at the curvature of the earth. You could literally see the curvature of the earth up here. You could see the darkness of space starting. You were, you were getting up there. You were getting towards the edge of the atmosphere, which is just, Insane. Can you imagine looking out your window, your airplane window, and seeing seeing this, seeing blackness up there and just the curve? That'd be pretty dope. Flat earthers, take a Concorde ride. The top speed of this thing was limited by temperature, not power. These four Rolls-Royce engines could go a lot faster if you wanted them to, but the plane would literally break apart and catch on fire and explode you know kind of like issues that space shuttles and things have had because it just it gets so hot because it's going so fast in fact as it was up here at these Mach 2 speeds it would expand up to two feet it'd get two feet longer how they engineered this I have no idea here we go we are we are leaving the UK by the way wow it's beautiful down there that's pretty cool Ros Rosero airstrip nice Looks like a lot of farmland and stuff. Dude, I really want to go to the UK. I really need to. I'm, I'm going to go hopefully this year. Dude, look at our jet trail all the way back behind us. That is so sick. Is it? Yeah, we still got alarms going off. Can we figure out what this alarm is? Is that a red thing? Where's our, like, alarm off? You got an alarm off button. Maybe turn the afterburners off. We'll see if we keep Mach 2. I believe you don't need the afterburners after you're already at Mach 2. It's kind of easy to keep. Ma'am, could you please take care of this? Where's the, where's the master alarm switch? I'm just going to go outside and pretend like all, all my problems are okay. Anyway, the last thing I've got for you guys is this was, you know, like I said, very, very expensive. It burned through fuel and things. Uh, the, the reason why the tickets were so expensive is because it cost so much to run. It was also just expensive to make. This is way more expensive 
than any fighter jet back then or even modern. You know, I think the F-35 Lightning II, which we just did in the last episode, originally cost around 130 million when it first came out. It's a little bit cheaper now. This thing, 200 million, just insane. And um, I, to be honest, I'm just infatuated by it. I, I, I just uh, peak interest, peak, uh, I just, I don't even know how this thing was possible. This giant tube floating through the sky at 14,000 miles per hour. It's just in insane. I, I don't I don't know how this ever existed, and it's it's pretty dang cool that it did. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I'm not really planning on sticking around three hours till we get to New York City. You know what? We we could at least land it. Not even gonna front with you. Okay, we have even more issues um is our landing gear down yeah i'm not gonna front with you guys i'm i'm just gonna i'm just gonna attempt to land this I mean, can i trim down maybe a little less speed i'm just gonna attempt to land this as we as we get you know close to the airport are we are we coming straight on i believe yeah I, i'm just i'm gonna land at that big big strip right there one uh, another fun fact that i wasn't gonna include but now that we're attempting the landing what you see back here in the back this is actually a, a new landing gear. So the, the approach angle of the Concorde, let me make sure that we don't go nose diving into the city. The approach angle, the, the glide slope was so uh, steep and it, it had to land at such a crazy angle that it, um, it, it, it needed that extra wheel in the back to not you know tail strike when it was landing. So this, this should be really interesting. I have no idea how fast we have to go to keep this thing airborne. We also definitely want to slow it down so that we don't overshoot the runway. I don't know if it's got air brakes. I don't know how to activate said air brakes if it does. So uh, thank you guys so much for joining me on this beautiful flight from sunny Paris over to New York City today. It was my pleasure to be serving you for the past three hours at supersonic speeds. Make sure to uh, tip your flight attendants on the way out. I know you're a bunch of rich, rich people back there with your $12,000 seats back here in 1990. You know how many Tamagotchis I could buy with that, man? Come on now. All right. I, I think we're probably coming in a little bit too hot. Maybe not. We'll see. The visibility in this thing's actually pretty good, and that's kind of crazy because that, that nose drops so much. Here we go. Here we go. All right. I pretty much. I'm hoping we have enough, enough glide in us to make it. I'm hoping. I'm just gonna try to land on the closest edge of the runway possible. Oh yeah, we made it. That wasn't bad. Are we going to be able to brake in time? I'm pressing the brake button that I know I have. I don't know if we're going to be able to brake in time, though. Our airspeed... Oh, we're going to be able to brake. Dude! I thought for sure we were going to come in way too hot and end up just destroying this thing, but we're fine. Let me taxi up to the gate then, huh? Bro, th let me... Are my afterburners on? Throw these bad boys on. Let's see what happens. Skirt! You don't see nothing. Mm. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Can you imagine? Just throwing the ABs on whenever we want. That's sick. Alright. Let me uh let me break here. We're gonna I think we're gonna turn in here. Uh this is Captain Martin requesting runway or taxiway. It's the one with the red box. Uh, one thir thir thirty thirty 1L to 13R. Yep, thank you. Confirmed. I'm just going to take it, if that's alright. Appreciate you. I mean, this thing, to be honest, it handles pretty well. Alright, we're going to bang a right here. <sighs> Hit the fence a little bit. Oh, fence kind of went up. I mean, we took a fence out. That's alright, though. Alright, this is going to be our jet bridge here. I hope you guys enjoyed your flight. 
Just gonna go ahead and pull this thing on in. Maybe give it a little, a little bit of gas. Sorry, it's my first day on the job. First, first time flying here. All right. There it is. Like a glove. So there you guys have it. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'm going to see you guys in our next one. Let me know what you guys want us to fly next. Definitely going to check out some more fighter jets and stuff. But stuff like this, dude. This, this might be the most fun I've had gaming in a very long time. Look at this, dude. We literally just landed a Concorde at JFK. The trip it was never able to make. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Peace out.